Hi, I'm the Morlander and this is Morlander EDC coming to you today with another top down video on something that's always been close to my heart. A lot of you, if you've watched a lot of my videos in the past, probably already know that I'm a massive bag guy. I love bags. Bags have always been my thing. What a lot of you might not already know is that I've always been a huge watch guy as well. Ever since I was young, when I got my first Casio watch, I've been a huge watch guy. And this is something that, that, well, this video itself is something that I've been trying to get together for a while, mainly through my own fault. And, you know, there's been other videos that I've, I've, that I've needed to make, but we're here today to look at alternate watch straps. Um, and mainly, I mean, looking at alternate straps, but looking at the NATO strap and a little bit of history of the NATO strap. So if you weren't aware, this is a, a, a typical NATO strap. So the NATO strap was developed by the British uh, Ministry of Defence during the 70s. What it found was, if I was to take this watch just as an example, that there were quite a lot of time sensitive operations that were happening at the time. Um, and there were also a lot of watches that were falling off. You know, being in the military, it's, it's a very dangerous job and these things get bashed around a lot. The main reason, or at least the the weakest part of any watch and strap setup are the the lug pins. So if this was on my watch and this pin here was to fall off, then there would be nothing whatsoever that would keep this onto my watch. If I was lucky, I'd see it drop. If I was even more lucky, it would be pressed underneath my shirt and you know I'd be able to keep it there, but nothing would stop that from falling out. So during the 70s, the military got together and decided that they needed to develop something that would stop a watch from falling off. Um, so being, you know, we British were very, very clever and we thought about this. So here you can see that you have the two uh, lug pins. So if one of these was to fall off, we still have an active lug pin here. And that's where, that's where it came from. So the original specifications for the NATO watch, uh, or at least the NATO strap, was that you know it needed to be 20 millimeters across, which all of these here are 20 millimeters across. They needed to be 280 mil millimeters in length um, and roughly 1.2 millimeters in thickness. Also, they also needed to be made quite cheaply and also be disposable so that if one was to, if you know you needed a new one, you could go to the quartermasters at the stores at the time. Uh, these are also known as a G10 strap. Uh, originally, the, um, the, the form you had to sign to get a new one was called a G10 form, um, but when it all went NATO, um, then they were given a, a NATO form or a NATO number to, to, to fill in. So this one here, for me, is the quintessential NATO strap. It is made from nylon or uh, polyester, um, and it is a length of webbing that is actually two parts. So you can see that there is a back strap here. If I zoom in, will you zoom in on that? Go on, you can do it, you can do it. So there is the back strap. Across that is is another strap which you, know, you can see there and then you have these loops so that's where you know you, you put it through and then there's two here so that you can fasten it and this loop here is what this passes through so the way in which they fix this whole thing if I bring this back down again is you have your watch and then you have the two lugs now I'll talk about lugs and I'll talk about lugs uh, lug width if you want to know your lug width, it's not the width of these two lugs here, if you don't know this already, but it's actually the distance between each of them. So here you can see that this is a 20 millimeter lug width, um, and it has these the, the, the watch spring pins. Um, I'm using slightly different ones. So these are the ones that you can take out. There's just a little fastener here that you pull back and they come out quite easily. Um, that will make sense. Oh, let's put this back in. I'll fast forward this bit. Now I was going to say that they're a lot faster to do, and they definitely are a lot faster to do. But when you're doing something at arm's length, it's always tricky, and when you're on camera, it always goes wrong. 
So, where was I? So the idea was that if you unfasten this, you can see there's, there's two parts to it there. What you can do is take the watch, pass it through the top lug spring, and then pull it through, and then pass it through the bottom lug spring, and pull it through, and that will keep your watch fastened for you. But that's not going to stop the watch from sliding up and down your arm. To do that then, you have the back strap that you pull it through, and it will fasten that in place. So that is, I mean, in, in itself, that is the NATO strap. You tend to find with the NATO strap, and by the way, this is a NATO strap from George's Straps, uh, georgiestraps.com. Um, they have lots of different types. What I wanted to do is just give you a different idea of all of the different varieties of materials that you can get these made from. Um, you can get, this is like a seat belt style fabric. Um, you can also have these so that they're leather, you can get them so that they're suede. They also come in different widths as well. So as I've mentioned, these, these uh, lug widths here, um, this is a 20 millimeter lug width. Um, they go up to, down to 18 millimeters. Uh, they also go up to 22 millimeters on lug widths if you have a, have a large watch. But what you tend to find with, as I say, this kind of quintessential NATO strap is, that these bars um, here are nice and flat. You generally find that they're a little bit more, hopefully I, can, I hope this is working. Hopefully you see, you can see that they're a little bit more low profile. Let's bring this up here, you can see there. So they're usually a thinner metal and a little bit more low profile to the, uh, to the actual strap itself. And that, that's the NATO, that's the actual NATO strap itself. Um, an evolution for, of the NATO strap then turned into the Zulu strap. Often, again, you'll hear different people calling them different things. NATO strap often is referred to as the three bar strap, as you have, you have these three bars. Whereas a Zulu strap, some people refer to that as a, as, as a, as a five bar strap. So if I take this off, and you can see how easy and quick it is to remove these. So if you have a nice watch that you dress for different occasions, you might have something that has a leather strap that you want whilst wearing it to work. Um, but at the weekend, you want to put one of these nylon style straps on um, because you're out and about. It, it, they really are that simple to change. So what you'll find with a Zulu strap is, um, these tend to be a little bit more hard wearing. Now that's not to say that the uh, normal NATO strap isn't hard wearing, but as you can see, the clasps here are big, strong, thick um, clasps. Same there, and you get two there as well. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing all of this in reverse. Is the, the camera shows it me at a, at a reverse angle, which is why I always seem to go that way before coming back. Um, so yeah, they, they tend to be a little bit more robust. Um, you'll hear these referred to as a, a five bar strap because you get one, two, three, four, five. You get two here at the end. But they work in exactly the same way. So you have a back strap, you have the front strap. You take your watch, you pass it through. Oh, sorry, I've done that the wrong way. You pass it through the top lug bring it back through the bottom lug and then pass it through the back strap. Now they fit in exactly the same way as any watch would do. You know, you have your clasp at the top, you have a length of holes, but I generally find that with NATO straps, Zulu straps, you get a lot more give in your watch. I have quite thick manly grrr, uh, wrists and I find that these fit me perfectly. So, and also it has a little bit extra wiggle room. I'm gonna put this on now, and this is also something that I want to show you guys as well. So, it's on my wrist. Generally I'd find that with a normal wrist watch like this, both sides of the band are orientated so that the clasp sits roughly underneath the watch head. Slightly different, with a Zulu or a NATO band. And, and that is because 
when you have the watch on, the watch sits a lot higher on the actual band itself, closer to the clasp at the top. So you find that the clasp become gets very close to here, and then you have this little bit there. But it also means that if you work in an environment where you have your hand down a lot and it's flat. Now I work in a in a studio where you know I type a lot or I have my mouse and keyboard at the same time, then I find that I get less kind of digging or less hot spots here which is why it's perfectly suited for uh, a lot of outdoor activities. So if you're climbing, uh, you know, you're rambling around different things, it, it doesn't catch on things because a lot of the metalwork is moved to the side. If you had a thinner um, arm than me, then you'll probably find that it would move it even, even further across for you. Now these Zulu straps I got from mksnatostraps.com. Um, all of these straps, in fact, I, might, I, I got from UK sites. With this being something that was invented here in the UK by the British, uh, Brit uh, British Ministry of Defence, I thought it was only suiting that I went to UK uh, manufacturers and sites to get these. Um, there'll be links to all of these in below. Um, the MKS site offer a, a, a wide range so George George's straps you get a lot of very high quality um, NATO straps from there um, with MKS straps you get NATO straps you also get um, Zulu straps just like these lots of different fabrics they range from an 18 millimeter lug width all the way up to a 24 millimeter lug width now you have to look at the, the each of the straps themselves some of the, um, the the smaller NATO straps only go up to a 22 um, some of these larger um, uh, NATO, uh, so, sorry some of these large Zulu straps start at 20 and go up to 24 but there's a, there's quite a wide range of different straps there the last type of strap is something that has always fascinated me and I happened to stumble across a British manufacturer at hawkrigger.com so the guy there a really nice fellow named Stu um, what he has done is he has took um, a, a French style strap so while I'm talking I'll take this off so I can explain it while I'm doing this so uh, Stu at Hort Rigger has developed um, what he calls the Parabellum strap so this is um, taken from the Marine National strap that was used uh, and was created during the 1970s as well um, if you find any photos of Damn! I forgot the guy's name. What's the guy's name? What is the guy's name? Jacques Cousteau. You'll find that a lot of the uh, diving equipment that was used by Jacques Cousteau has this type um, of, of band. So instead of it being a, a, a very fixed nylon polyester style band, instead it uses a, a, a really dense and very strong elastic band instead. The idea with this is that hopefully because there's a little bit more give in it then it will maybe take a few more knocks before um, the, um, the, the lug springs give out. But, in, but there also a major difference with this one is that you have to put your hand through it and then tighten it. So these are also extremely easy to fit although you do need to take um, your, your lug springs off which is why I mentioned earlier I use these if I bring this up you can see these these are used a lot let's see if I can turn that around these are used a lot um, with with new watches so if you can see there there's that little pin that you move across and it opens the gate so if I take this off there like that take that one off as well sorry I'm trying to do this looking at the uh, the camera then all you need to do is drop it on oh, do you know what I practiced this before we started in fact I, did, I probably didn't even need to practice and I say that but I wanted to make sure that I was doing it right but it always shows when you're doing stuff live it's always more it's always ah! 
and one fell out. If I was on the battlefield and that fell out though, I'd still have an active watch. Sorry, let's put that back in. There you go, we're in. So the way that these work is, you put your hand through it. In fact, sorry, it's upside down. You put your hand through it. And then you have a, a little ratchet here. So it pulls back through there. And this clasp, it pushes through. If you can see that. And then it flicks over like that. In fact, look at that. In my rush, I've even put the watch on upside down. But really 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 nice I get a lot of compliments and I get a lot of questions about these Hawk Rigger um, Parabellum straps um, I was lucky enough um, that I got in touch with Hawk Rigger and I was I was sent out an extra one now this I'm not going to show you too much about this but this is just really so that you can see the different colors um, this was more of a, a design concept that they wanted to to, to tweak a little bit um, Whereas this new version, there have been some changes to it. The original version that I got was perfect. It really was amazing. But what they've been able to do is just have a few tweaks on this so it's even easier to be able to take it on and off. Um, and I highly recommend all of these different types of straps. So if you're wanting to take the watch that you already have and to be able to switch it up a little bit more often, then you can use these straps to do that. Very, very simple, very, very effective, and you can change the look and feel of a watch within seconds, especially these. These slip on straight on and off. Now, it took me a little bit of fiddling there because I was looking at the camera while I was, whilst I was doing it, but hopefully you can see that if I was off camera and, you know, it's definitely easy to do. So I'll leave links to all of these different manufacturers in the uh, description below. Um, today is my birthday, so yay! Happy birthday, Morlander! Um, if you want to put happy birthday in the comments, that'd be awesome. If you don't, well, you're just nasty. Um, if you enjoyed my content, please feel free to hit that like button, whichever side that it's on. That would be great. It helps me with my listings here on YouTube. If you'd like to subscribe so that you can see future content, then that's great as well. Hit the subscribe button, whichever side's that on, and, and then the notification button so that you can see as soon as my uh, content is released. What I'm also doing this year, you'll probably notice that I started to do a little bit more towards the end of last year, is asking if people can share my content on their social media feeds. Um, that would be amazing. Check me out on Instagram. You can find me at uh, morelander underscore edc. If you like these bands, especially these two here in the middle, keep a lookout on um, Instagram as I will be doing a giveaway soon. These two are the ones that I'll be keeping, um, but I have two brand new ones of these, very, very similar to the ones that James Bond wears in his recent films. So yeah, keep an eye on that. But for now, stay safe, stay Moorlander, and stay EDC. Bye.